Hi everyone and welcome to this time-lapse version of my swan and water reflections in soft pastel. I'll be releasing longer tutorials from this over on my Patreon channel. Make sure you check out the links in the description below and do subscribe here on YouTube for all my free content. But I hope you enjoy this. So this piece was inspired by a beautiful photo that I took in Ireland when travelling around in our motor home. One of the many beautiful mornings that we got to wake up uh, parked next to a quiet lake or next to the ocean. And on this occasion I managed to take a whole series of beautiful photo reference of this swan. And this is the first one that I've got a chance to have a go at. I've been dying to paint this for ages. I love painting water. And you can see that I've made a start with the background. The main key to painting water really is to pay attention to all of those horizontal lines. So you can see at the start that I've brought in the trees that are reflecting above the water line. I've brought those in as vertical lines, but very quickly then I've switched to using horizontal marks. So if the water's calm, you're going to have very still uh, straight horizontal lines and then if there's any kind of ripple or movement in the water obviously that makes things more complicated but for me painting still water is actually not as difficult as you might think so you can see I'm just layering up the darker colors first then coming in with that lighter green it doesn't take very much before it starts to give the effect of those wobbly reflections. But the key thing is making those lines as horizontal as possible. So I kept the background area very simple in this one. I cropped the photo reference. I actually had more in the photo than this, but I really cropped it so that it was just water in the background. And I love using ripples as backgrounds because it gives it almost an abstract feeling, especially when you can't see exactly what it is reflecting in the water. So I, I like the sort of abstract nature of this backdrop. And that's something that water reflections often give me in my paintings. Yes, I'm painting something realistically, but it also has an abstract feel to it, which I love. So when you're working on water reflections, half the battle is knowing exactly what it is you're looking at. So where the water is tilted towards the background area where the greenery and the trees are, that's reflecting those colours, the greens and the browns. But because the swan has disrupted the water in this area, some of the water is tilting in a different direction, so each little ripple has some water that's tilting towards, well, I presume it's the sky because it's reflecting a very light grey. So understanding the photo reference that you're looking at sometimes is half the battle to being able to paint it. So on this scale, the piece was 18 inches tall. And even though that's a reasonably large piece, it makes the swan itself very small within the composition. So a lot of the time I'm using my smaller pieces of pastel. I'm also bringing in some pastel pencil. Although I always prefer to use the soft pastel sticks where I can because it gives me real richness of colour. And I've brought a lot of the green that's in the background into the feathers of the swan. So when I'm looking in the shadow areas, I'm using pinky peaches, light greens, some warmth for the swan, but also reflecting some of that green that's bouncing all around. So always remember with both white objects and black objects, you're going to get a lot of different colors reflected on there. So try to broaden the color range that you're looking for 
Try not to think in terms of monochrome grays. Try and look for other tints of colors that you can enhance or exaggerate slightly in your painting. That's the beauty of painting. You have artistic license. You can take the colors that you see and you can push the values a little bit further. So the most difficult part of the piece, I thought, was the reflection just below the swan. There's so much going on with that reflection. Parts of the ripples are facing towards the sky, so we still get little lines of blue coming across. But then we've got the lovely shape that the swan's reflection makes. And even though I'm making very unusual shapes and blocking in larger areas in some cases, you can see that there is a sense of the horizontal line still running through each part of the reflection. The only part where you can see it doesn't run horizontally is where I'm trying to create that circular feel of the ripples surrounding the swan. So over to the right of the swan, you can see how I've tried to curve those reflections around in a sort of semicircle as it comes back and goes behind the swan. So anywhere where there's disruption in the water, the ripples are going to behave a little differently. But anywhere that you have calm water, just think horizontal lines. If anyone's ever uh, played uh, any old 1980s computer games, I remember playing on an Amstrad when I was very young, and the computer game had a loading screen at the very beginning. You had to wait about 10 minutes for the game to load. And each picture on the loading screen would load up one little horizontal line at a time. And I used to love sitting watching it load up. But that's what painting water reminds me of. Thinking of those horizontal lines, the contrast between the colors. And each time I'm painting water, that's just what I think of those Amstrad games as they load it up. So working on down the neck of the swan, you can see how broken the shape of the swan's neck is. And it's just about trying to get it to look fluid. So each little part of the neck that juts out in the reflected area, trying to make sure that it's nice and curved, everything's fluid, no sharp lines or corners. And I don't have to be really precise, as always, with the soft pastels. I use them to block in a lot of the colour, but you can see that I do come back in with pastel pencils, especially to shape things like the swan's neck and make sure that there's enough contrast between it and the background for it to really pop. So working my way on down the reflections, as these ripples come out from the swan, as they radiate out towards you, the viewer, they seem to face more towards the sky. You get a lot more of the blue reflection. And I was in two minds whether to continue the green down to the bottom of the piece. But I think I like the lighter blue colour down here just to break up some of the darkness. And also because I know from being there how the ripples behave as they come out towards you. So I think it gives more a sense of movement within the piece, having more of the reflected sky at the bottom. And finally, these little stems of grass just sprouting out of the water. And a little area like this just adds so much interest to the piece. I loved their reflection in the water too, so it's a small detail to add. The swan may have been nice on its own, but I really liked these spiky stems. And again, it's the same technique, 
tiny pieces of pastel and then neatening up with the pastel pencils. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing this come together. It was a lot of fun for me to work on and I'll be making in-depth tutorials from all of this very soon, showing you how to paint water reflections as well as that beautiful swan. So thanks again for watching. Please do subscribe here on YouTube and I'll see you next time.